Hey, I'm Dave Rubin and this is TYT 140, a lot of news in a little time. On Tuesday, the White House released the National Climate Assessment, a meticulously researched document revealing that the effects of human-induced climate change are already being felt across the nation. The different effects described include torrential downpours, coastal flooding, record-setting wildfires, and prolonged droughts, or as congressional Republicans call them, a bunch of unrelated weather events intended to distract from the real story, Benghazi. In a major decision on the role of religion in government, the Supreme Court Monday ruled that town board sessions can open with sectarian prayers. Writing for the court's conservative majority, Justice Anthony Kennedy said that the Christian prayers used to open the city of Greece, New York's town council meetings, were largely ceremonial and therefore did not violate the rights of non-Christians. Critics say the decision will undermine the nation's long-standing separation of church and state, but when has mixing religion and government ever been a problem? A new study suggests that the death rate in Massachusetts dropped significantly after the state adopted mandatory health care in 2006. The study found that the state's death rate fell by 3% in the four years after the law went into effect, mostly among the poor and previously uninsured. While supporters of Obamacare are using the study to tout the benefits of universal coverage, opponents are highlighting the downside of a lower death rate, such as the sharp decline experienced by the Massachusetts funeral industry. South Carolina Republican Congressman and former federal prosecutor Trey Gowdy has been tapped to lead an investigation into the 2012 Benghazi attacks. In announcing Gowdy's unique qualifications for pursuing the Benghazi inquiry, House Speaker John Boehner noted that Gowdy not only has tremendous investigative skills, but that having personally voted to repeal Obamacare more than 50 times, he clearly doesn't mind wasting vast amounts of time and taxpayer money. And finally, the time has arrived to take a look under the hood and celebrate International Clitoris Awareness Week. Designated by that by the Las Vegas-based group Clitorade, this week's celebrations will include girls' night out parties, a group member walking around Chicago dressed as a vulva, and a creation of a giant sand vulva on a Miami beach. Organizers expect the event to be attended mostly by women, as men just won't be able to find it. I'm Dave Rubin. Follow us on Twitter at TYT140 and suggest stories using hashtag TYT140. We'll see you tomorrow.